remember when I first heard about Journey back in 2012 and was immediately intrigued by its premise. There was only one problem, the game was exclusive to PlayStation and I didn't have one at the time, in fact I still don't. For 7 years I've essentially written off Journey on the list of games I've intended to play until, to the surprise of many, it was announced to be available for PC on the Epic Store. So what is Journey exactly? Journey is an indie adventure game developed by that game company. It shares similarities with walking sims in that the story is delivered through exploration of the environment. When it comes to gameplay, Journey is as simple as they come. From the beginning you are treated to a series of tutorials teaching you to walk, fly and sing. Singing is used to interact with various objects and animals. The length and volume of the shout is dependent on how long you hold the button to perform it. Your ability to fly is limited to your scarf's length and energy. Other actions such as jumping and sliding are done automatically when you approach steps and a steep surface respectively. And that's it, that's pretty much the gameplay. The gameplay mechanics are relatively unremarkable but this is done intentionally. Journey follows a philosophy known as design by subtraction, where any mechanics that are unnecessary or don't contribute to the game's themes are taken out. What's left is a game that feels restrained and basic yet focused. This design philosophy can be seen all over the game, right down to its user interface, or lack thereof. Apart from the in-game menu and tutorial prompts, the game is devoid of any UI elements such as a minimap or checkpoints. The only important thing to keep track of is how much further you can fly, which is indicated by the glowing runes on your scarf rather than an obtrusive UI element. I mentioned how the game didn't have a minimap or checkpoints. That's because Journey leads the player through various landmarks. When you begin the game, you're only allowed to move the camera, and when you do, you are presented with your first landmark, a small hill. When you reach the hill, you see a mountain in the distance in the game's title. And just like that, you know the end goal is the summit. Afterwards, the game directs you to a small platform in the distance, and it keeps going from there. I see a tall tower, but what's this light in the distance? I'm wandering the desert, but what's this building? I go inside, I can't go right, so I go left. Once I do, I see a much larger structure in the distance. Journey is full of moments like these, and it's a clever way of directing the player through curiosity. The game moves the player forward without explicit direction or words. It gives the illusion that the environment is open and free in a game that is very linear. To summarize, the game's mechanics may be simple but every action serves a purpose. The lack of a UI immerses the player in its world rather than focusing on a statistic, and the world design leads the player through curiosity. So, is there anything it does wrong? If I had any criticism, it's that despite its 2-3 hour playtime, it doesn't have much replay value. Much of the excitement of Journey comes from the very first playthrough, and repeat replays has steep diminishing returns. I predict most players will go through the game at least twice. The first is to experience the game and the second is forgetting all the achievements. It's clear that the game wasn't intended to be played ad nauseum, and that's perfectly fine. But Journey isn't entirely known for its gameplay, it's only one part of the whole experience. Journey is largely remembered for what emotions it evokes from the player something that the developers actively strived for. This is mostly why people describe Journey as being more poetic and artistic and less of a game. This can be boiled down to three things, the world, the music, and a sense of companionship. Journey's world is intended to make the player feel small in scale and elicit a sense of awe from its surroundings. This is reflected in the various camera angles which use low angles to make the environment seem large in comparison to the player. What this effectively does is make the environment a focus in the majority of the game's runtime. And I haven't even mentioned the art design which is minimalistic and beautiful with vibrant colours. The rendering of sand is probably the best I've seen even to this day. But it's more than just for show as it conveys the tone of the game as you progress through the game's lighter and darker moments. Speaking of the game's tone, I think it's a good time to bring up the music composed by Austin Wintory. Journey's world and art design is inseparable from its music, and it's these elements which allow Journey to evoke as much emotion as it does. Journey's music is subtle and prominent when it needs to be, and it perfectly synergizes with what is presented on screen. 
In its fun and exciting moments, the world is vibrant and inviting. The music is upbeat and adventurous. When the tone shifts to something darker, the color palette shifts to various shades of blue to convey the feeling of being lost and unsure. The music is now quieter and more ominous. Later on, when you are making the final climb towards the mountain, the color conveys lifelessness by changing the palette to be mostly white. This is also shown by your scarf which is slowly fading away along with its energy. And finally, towards the end of the game, the world is brimming with color again. Suddenly the world feels free and full of life. The score is now triumphant and liberating after going through many trials and hardships. When you reach the summit, all that's left is a cello. Interestingly enough, the cello is one of the first instruments you hear in the game, and, according to the composer, it represents the player. Ending the game on a cello perfectly brings the game to a full circle, as the imagery of walking towards the light resembles the beginning of the game when you see the mountain for the first time. I mentioned the concept of multiplayer briefly, but I never went into it in detail, until now that is. Unfortunately, on repeat playthroughs I wasn't able to connect with anyone and couldn't record my own footage. You may or may not have already noticed but Journey's world, while beautiful, is mostly devoid of life. This can be a lonely experience and finding another player in a world devoid of intelligent life is pretty special. When developing for multiplayer, the game's director remarked how people in multiplayer games typically focus on the objective, which made it difficult to create a connection with other players. Journey was designed for cooperation in mind, while eliminating any elements that may cause competition. To encourage cooperation between players, it was important to eliminate any bias between others. This meant that when people encountered each other, they would see each other as equals regardless of gender or age. To accomplish this, the developers started with the character design, as the player's impression of the protagonist is likely to be established by their first perception of it. Journey's Traveler underwent several iterations before being finalized with a design where its age and gender was ambiguous. The developers also made the decision to leave out text or voice chat as well as viewable player IDs, as they felt that direct communication with other players would introduce conflict between each other. The only form of communication allowed was through actions performed in-game and a short musical note. Cooperation is also encouraged in the gameplay mechanics, as the presence of another player could only be viewed positively by allowing both players to charge each other's scarves through singing and sticking together. By creating a mechanic that could only result in positive outcomes, no player can hurt or hinder each other. To eliminate any form of competition between players, the developers ensured that the game didn't have many goals or tasks that would divert the player's focus from each other. Additionally, there were no in-game mechanics that would provide power over another player, such as weapons. The result is a multiplayer component that encourages players to stick together and possibly develop a sense of companionship as they both go through the same adventures and trials together.
journey's story is split into two parts. The first details the rise and fall of the civilization that came before. However, the more interesting narrative is the journey you embark on. What's interesting about Journey's story is the lack of narration. It's never stated why you need to climb the mountain, only that you need to go there. The lack of narration in the game invites the player to come to their own conclusions and meanings based on the visuals provided. In this video, I'm going to focus on two interpretations that make the most sense to me. The first is the idea that your character is embarking on a hero's journey. The events in the game line up with the basic template of storytelling where you embark on an adventure, cross the road of trials, and hit your lowest point. Afterwards you begin to rise and go through a change. At the end you return from your journey with the knowledge of what awaits many travellers, and you have the ability to help them if you choose to do so when you start a new game. The second interpretation is that the game is a metaphor for life. You start the game being born into the world which is shown by one of the paintings that lines up with what was shown in the beginning of the game. The world seems strange at first but later on in life you have fun and exhilarating adventures. Towards the midpoint in life is when you encounter hardships and the responsibility of becoming an adult. At the end, you die and ascend to the heavens before being reincarnated back into the world. This is shown by the burst of light rising from the mountain and resting on the hill where you started. The idea of reincarnation is also supported by the fact that your musical note is different every playthrough. There are far more theories and ideas of what the journey represents or means, but they all share one thing in common. It's not about the end, but how you got there. And based on the title of the game, I think that's the point. If you ask me, any of these interpretations are valid. Journey is a personal story in its own abstract way, so it's only appropriate that the meanings you draw from it are the ones you're most happy with. Journey was certainly a unique experience, and I get the feeling that the impact I felt towards the end was similar to how it must have felt seven years ago. I've spent a lot of time looking at the game's mechanics, design, art and music, and was surprised to find that despite its surface level simplicity, there was a lot of complex decisions and choices to make each aspect work as well as it does to draw the most emotion. There's often a debate on whether games can be art, and the simple answer is yes. Journey is a prime example. It's an application of skill presented in visual form to evoke human emotion, and it's also abstract to invite many interpretations. But art is a broad term encompassing many mediums and genres such as abstract art, modern art, fan art, dance, and music just to name a few. In fact the term is so broad that a urinal turned to its side with a signature written on it could be considered an art piece, which leads me to believe that art can be just about anything. But that's just my interpretation. 